I absolutely love public transportation, and a lot of other people do too. It helps connect communities, create new jobs and opportunities, and it makes our cities better at adapting to change and makes our cities more sustainable. But there's one really big thing that's holding back a lot of transit projects in North America, and very specifically in the US, and that's money. Our society relies on the stuff, and if your city's transit agency doesn't have enough of the stuff, then you're definitely not going to get that shiny new transit extension, much less a network. And American transit agencies have been dealing with this problem since their creation. Not only are they woefully underfunded, but costs in terms of building new transit lines by all modes have absolutely skyrocketed, especially over the last 20 years. But why are these construction costs per mile going up? And is there anything we can do to reduce these costs of transit so that way we can build more of it for less? One of the biggest reasons that many transit agencies are facing ballooning cost is just the overall cost of scale from building these transit projects. One of the most basic economic rules that exists is economies of scale. The simplest breakdown of this rule is that if you make more of something, then it will become both cheaper and easier to make. While many transit agencies across the US and Canada have gotten this down for their rolling stock, often ordering the exact same models of trains or ordering them all in bulk orders, the problem is that these agencies aren't taking the same strategy to building new transit extensions or improvements to the public transit's right of way. With transit extensions in North America usually just being spaced out in between periods of time. This starting and stopping of transit building not only costs more to do, but ends up making projects take longer than they realistically should. This starting and stopping of transit construction at the end of the day really comes down to an overall lack of immediate funding to do larger scale transit projects. And while it might be less upfront for an agency to build one line instead of multiple, at the end of the day, if they have plans to build multiple, but keep starting and stopping construction, it will end up costing more money and taking significantly longer than if they had just kept continually building more transit. One agency that seems to have kind of gotten this down is Metro LA in Los Angeles. With multiple light rail and heavy rail projects all being built at once or in succession over the past 20 years, it's definitely helping in some respect to reduce the cost of these transit projects, with many of LA Metro light rail extensions being considerably quicker to build and cheaper than California California's other major city, San Francisco, which just fairly recently created a one-off LRT extension project of its own. But the economies of scale is only one small part in the reason why transit is so expensive to build in the US, and Metro LA's extensions are still on the pricier end of transit projects, even by US standards. A fairly major part of any government-funded projects in the U.S. is without a doubt the Buy American Act. This law has been in place for almost 100 years at this point, and it states that any government agency in the U.S. must prefer U.S.-made products when it makes a purchase. While this law has the best intentions and is completely understandable in terms of a military aspect, it has led to a more restricted market when it comes down to manufacturing for public transit, limiting where agencies can procure parts for transit projects, including rolling stock, Rails, wires, signs, and literally anything for the projects. This increases prices for what agencies need to pay to acquire literally anything for building transit extensions. Now, while limiting where agencies can procure products does raise costs, it also ensures that agencies and the US government can hold companies accountable for shipping out inferior products since they do operate within the US. While these past two reasons can increase costs for transit projects around the US, nothing is quite as pervasive in increased costs projects as this, my Patreon. That's right, my Patreon is behind these expensive transit building costs. Every transit agency is spending their entire budgets to support the channel and get benefits like early access to videos, extra videos, your name in the credits, and more. The link is down below, and tiers start at just a dollar a month. But let's get back into the video. The biggest issue that often plagues many public works projects is the constant subcontracting that many public transit agencies are doing for their projects. While it is smart for agencies to sometimes outsource some of the design process to outside consultants, in a lot of cases around the US, transit agencies resort to outsourcing much of the design process, even down to the most basic of decisions to outside consulting companies who charge millions of dollars for their services. Contrast this with most other agencies 
agencies outside of the US and Canada who do a lot of these basic design choices in-house. This ends up saving these agencies millions of dollars in costs before shovels even go into the ground. However, that brings us to another reason why transit costs are so high in the US. Construction. It's the sight and sound of progress, but when it's happening, it's an incredible inconvenience. Now, transit agencies, like other public projects, have to listen to the community when it comes to building new transit projects. And with that, transit agencies have to reduce the amount of inconvenience to the surrounding communities that are going to be dealing with this transit construction. This adds on additional logistical challenges that these projects have to face in order to get built. And when transit agencies have to do their best to avoid being an annoyance to others during the the construction of these projects, it often leads to an inflated cost for these transit projects. Because, you know, now we have to bring on more consultants to see how we can reduce the annoyance to the community. If you want to see one transit expansion plan that really shows how much consulting and avoiding annoyances can really spiral a project into a true nightmare of costs and slow construction, then look no further than VTA's BART Silicon Valley Phase 2 extension. This transit expansion plan that is underway is going to provide a six month extension to BART further into Santa Clara County and provide direct access to BART into downtown San Jose. While this is a project that should have been done 50 years ago with the initial creation of BART, it's still good that it was considered and is beginning construction now. However, this project has some problems that are causing it to absolutely skyrocket in price and take longer than it ever should have. VTA holds to the current timeline of the project, then it will have taken a total of 39 years to complete the six mile extension. This is because for the first 18 years of the project's existence, it was stuck in alternatives analysis and environmental clearance. Now, some input on major projects is a good thing, but 20 years worth of it at the end of the day is just too much input, especially when we need all the transit we can get to reduce our emissions and highway expansion projects get clearance without any issues of this magnitude. On top of this, they spent another six separate years on design and engineering the six mile extension of the BART system. And finally, it's going to take about 15 years of construction and a couple years after that of testing before we finally see the opening of this extension sometime between 2037 and 2039 at an estimated final cost of $12.7 billion. But why is the estimated cost of this project going to be so high? Well, besides the two decades of consultation and environmental review, a lot of this cost is coming from the design. The construction process that they're going with is deep boring tunnels underneath San Jose. This is a lot more expensive than the other way of building tunnels known as cut and cover design. But why are they going with this significantly lengthier construction process? Well, it's actually to avoid annoying the people who live around it. You see, many of the residents in this area fought the project, mainly out of concern of noise and construction. So after nearly 40 years of total work in 2039, we will see a six mile extension that will have cost two billion dollars a mile to build. This is an absolutely incomprehensibly high number for public transit construction even by North American standards and really just combines all of the worst factors of what holds us back when it comes to building public transit within our communities. So what can we even do to get costs like these somewhat under control for other projects? There is no one-size-fits-all solution to keep transit costs from going up higher. Every project presents different challenges that can both raise or reduce costs. However, there are some steps that our transit agencies can take to help reduce costs and help us get more transit per dollar that we spend. One of the biggest things that our transit agencies can do is to stop relying on outside consulting for most of the design process. Consulting firms are always going to charge more for designs than teams who work in-house. So having in-house design teams can help reduce our transit agencies to Dependence on outside firms and help reduce costs on future projects. On top of this, making it easier for transit projects to pass environmental reviews and community input can greatly reduce the amount of time and costs associated with transit projects. We also cannot forget that when we build more transit and continually build more transit projects, instead of starting and stopping extensions and improvement projects like we do now, can also reduce the cost of transit projects. Public transit with 
dedicated right-of-ways has always had a high initial cost to build. But that's okay, because the high cost of building transit projects is always outweighed by the massive benefits that they provide to the communities that they serve. Not only with reduced emissions and reduced traffic on local roads and streets, but they also provide massive economic benefits for cities too. Every billion dollars spent on public transit provides 50,000 jobs in return, as well as massive improvements to surrounding neighborhoods. Expanding public transit services is one of the best ways that cities can not only enrich themselves, but also provide better opportunities for their residents, especially compared to the alternative that is adding more lanes to roads, which further increases emissions, makes traffic worse in our cities, and makes our cities less safe. And on top of all that, it puts our cities further into debt that car dependency creates, not only for our residents, but also for our municipalities who have to maintain them. We should continue to build transit no matter what the cost is, but by looking into solutions and embracing plans that can help us reduce the cost associated with building transit, we can build more public transit faster and make our communities equitable, sustainable, adaptable, and overall, a better place to live. But what do you think about the cost of building transit? Do you think it's too high? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I want to thank Tony Stunts, John Shukites, and all of my other patrons who make these videos possible. And if you want to support the channel yourself and get extra benefits like your name in the credits, early access to videos, extra videos, and more, then feel free to check out my Patreon. The link is down below. Also down there, you'll find links to my socials. I post updates and extra content there. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. It's been a bit of a week this week for me, but regardless, thank you so much, and as always, I'll see y'all on the next one.